ready? Yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest installment of Road Shows and Stuff. I'm your host, Doug McLean, here with Frank Mancina. Frank, how are you today? Good. How are you, Doug? Good, 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 good. Um, I'm about to share an insider secret, uh, which I normally wouldn't do, but today is actually what's known as a re-record uh, because we've had some technical issues. And those are things that we just want to be up front with our uh, listeners and not really hide anything. And that's why we're doing this. But uh, and, today uh, is a special day. It's a special, uh, it's a special installment. But why is that, Frank? Uh, I, well, ironically, we had our technical issues with our <laughs> director of technology, Ted oh, O'Malley. The irony. Is our, so Ted O'Malley is our uh, our guest today. He's our director of technology. So that's right. That's right. And uh, we're going to talk to Ted today a little bit about technology in the industry, in the uh, in mobile marketing applications, uh, where things were about twenty or so odd years ago, how they've evolved, uh, where we are now, and uh, how he sees things in the future. Mm-hmm. So, do you want to? Uh, well, uh, I'll, uh, I'll add him in right now. Actually, let's see if he's let's see, he's... see if he can figure out his keyboard. <laughs> Director of technology. Oh, he's there he on. is, muted with no camera. Hello there. Hey, hey Ted. Hey, Ted, how are you today? I am doing well. Good to see you guys. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Good. Thanks for joining Tomorrow us. Tomorrow for me, though, I'm in Florida, and we're about a day ahead of everybody. <laughs> God, beautiful. Is, and, <laughs> so it'd be a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Yes. <laughs> uh, Ted, we're going to do something amazing today that we normally wouldn't do. Uh, the name of the podcast is Road Shows and Stuff. And to mix it up a little bit today, even though no one knows you, uh, we're going to start with a stuff. Well, that's different. This <laughs> is different. So we're going to get to know you on another level before we really get to know you, if that makes any sense. Okay. So here we go. Are you ready? I don't know if I'm ready. (laughs) So for the two of you, if you could retire anywhere in the world, where would you retire and why? You both have the floor. Go ahead. I'm here. I'm here. I have landed in my forever home in Florida. (laughs) Never to move again. Really? Of any place though in the world that is going to retire? Truly anywhere in the world. Name a country, name an island. This is where I want to live. No kidding. Well, that's impressive. That is yeah. very impressive. That, uh... Well, can I have two places? Because <laughs> Yeah, of course. Okay. So winter Italy. time, it, it, it'll be one. The second <laughs> one would be Florida because I can golf all year. Uh, and that's a big passion of mine. I just want to, I just want to golf all year round. <laughs> so and you're good. You're getting better. I'm getting better. Yeah. I'm getting yeah, better. R- so rumor has it on the street. Yeah. Okay. Well, for so. me, uh, probably be the Island of Kauai in Hawaii. Oh, uh, nice. big fan of Hawaii. Always have been love to live there. I'll uh, probably miss the seasons after about three weeks and then come back to Detroit, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's Hawaii for me. So with that Anywho. being said, <laughs> that was tremendously successful. So thank you. I'm all focused on retiring right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait till the end of the, uh, wait till the end of the podcast, please. Ted. Okay. All right. So Ted, could you please uh, just do a little bit of an introduction uh, sure. about yourself, how you started with MRA, what you've been doing, um, past programs you've been involved with? Certainly. So uh, I'm the technology director for MRA and um, I guess it's been about seven years now, Um, but I was actually a contractor with MRA before then. So that history goes back 20 years, um, working with other companies or uh, my own company at at different times for different projects. So I've had a little bit of uh, time to to learn a lot of the, learn to work with a lot of the people in the company. And one of the greatest things that I think is about how Many of the people that work for MRA today or in leadership roles or, or primary positions were there then. Um, and that's, that shows some great staying power, which is usually the result of a pretty good company to work for. So sure, I am happy to be here as an employee now and get my hands dirty with all different kinds of projects. I get to wear a lot of hats and it, because it, my job is anything from from very technical dry stuff to real colorful fun stuff to play with all the latest and greatest uh, cutting edge stuff. I try to stay away from the bleeding edge a little bit uh, (laughs) because we don't want to put our clients through that learning curve. Um, 
but uh, but I really like uh, getting to integrate a lot of different technologies and um, new things into our tours. Well, what's an example of an early program that you worked on, and what was that like as far as technology was concerned? <laughs> and, and how we, long ago and was we that? used the term technology loosely? Uh, so <laughs> twenty years ago. Uh, Fujifilm was one of the big tours, and um, we had a wall of screens uh, displaying pictures in a, in a rotating fashion of uh, uh, that were taken with a digital camera just to show people, hey, digital cameras can work. They can be a real yeah. thing. Uh, you know, nobody had one on their phone, really, to speak of. So um, that, of course, that wall of little monitors took a tower of servers to drive. Um, and there was no real animation going on. It was just picture <laughs> after picture after picture <laughs> in a little loop, about 12 or 10 or 12 images per screen. Um, wow. And that was, it was a, it, boy, it got people's attention. They would just get locked into one screen and then move to the next. They couldn't, you couldn't <laughs> hardly tear them away to see the rest of the tour. And all it was was just rotating. It was a slideshow of pictures. Um, it's like watching a screensaver on your laptop. Yeah, very <laughs> much. Very much. Uh, now, how, how long ago was that again? Twenty years ago. About twenty years. And, you know, wow. Fast forward now. What, what, what's anything come to? No, it's to about mind? the same. We do about the same thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, things have definitely come a long way. Um, now everything is. There's very little stagnant uh, type of uh, technology. I mean, there's a lot underneath the scenes that people don't know is going on, but. The idea is it's much more interactive and involving. It's a more hands-on approach, whether it be touch screens or tablets to interact with or control to experience it. Um, we do a lot of client, or, or excuse me, we do a lot of visitor uh, driven experiences where the visitor can actually choose their own adventure, if you will. Oh, cool. um, but also there's, there's instructor led or presentation or sales um, oriented shows that, um, we, we try to take it from, you know, from a basic PowerPoint and make it bigger, make it uh, more impressive and great use of video and audio and lighting to sure. uh, help them sell what they're, what they're doing and help drive their point home. Now, is there any, any tours um, that come to mind in terms of, uh, you know, maybe most more recent tours or for more years? modern technology that have a yeah. little bit of a wow so, factor. Or so currently on the road, um, one is uh, Duracell that uh, takes it. advantage of a very wide screen video wall, floor to ceiling video wall, uh, very, very tight dot pitch on the pixels. And if you know anything about video walls, they, you know that they look great from far away, but it takes some effort to make them look great up close too. And, sure. uh, and, and lots of video control and lighting control so that uh, a presenter can just tap a button to take control of the exhibit to lower lights, to kick off videos, to see one thing happen on one screen and one on something else and, and so forth. Um, and so that's a, uh, that's a pretty involved tour. Um, mm. And it's, uh, there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. So with that, with that type of complexity, what, what types of, of issues does something like that pose on the road? Um, well, you know, con technically connectivity, connectivity is one of our, our big issues that we always wrestle with. Um, we do try, uh, I, I like computers, I've liked computers all my life, um, but they require a little bit of attention. Uh, yeah. They need their updates. Uh, tablets are not much different. Um, the Mac OS needs it, Windows needs it, everybody needs a little bit of your attention. And admittedly, on our tours, um, boy, sometimes if the tour is not running for a month or two or three, yeah. and then you take it back out on the road, especially post COVID bringing tours back alive after, uh, after being down for a year. Sure. A uh, lot of updates needed for these uh, windows boxes and Apple iPads and, and tablets and other things. And that can really get uh, in the way of your show starting on time. Yeah. Uh, where possible, I really like uh, solid state approaches, something that doesn't care if it's shut down gracefully. It doesn't care what the temperature is when it started up. It just, sure. you power it up and it runs and you shut it off and it goes to sleep and waits for the next time. That's a, that's um, a good point. It's gotta be pretty manageable, doesn't it? I mean, in theory, mm, yeah. you could be doing two, three, four events a week and this technology is cycling through, you know, start and shut down cycles. It has to be easy to manage for the tour operator, whoever's mm, out on the field with it. 
and the, and the sales people. So sometimes sure. they're, sometimes they walk in uh, with no training and no, no experience on this and they are expected to present in a trailer or they're expected to, yeah. you know, bring in to ho be the host at least for, for an event. And um, so yes, making it very straightforward, a single button where possible or clearly labeled buttons on an iPad if necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where even the salesperson or the or the driver can can operate it and uh, and have some degree of confidence that it will react the way it's supposed to. Sure. Do. And not only that, but managing budgets and expectations too of clients. I mean, I'm sure they come with a, a wish list, you know, a they, mile they long do. of things they'd like to implement and integate into mm -hmm, the experience, right. which isn't and, always realistic. Not being in a brick and mortar. True. True. So sometimes we have to value engineer their idea. To try to still give them essentially the same idea, but Frank, maybe with Frank, maybe side with note, a different idea. <laughs> value engineer, could you write maybe that with down? a different back end? Yeah, and, my uh, But one of my favorite things, really, honestly, is to uh, during this process where we're kind of identifying the hardware, I start to share what else the hardware might be able to do, what else they could accomplish that mm -hmm. they, maybe they hadn't thought of, and now it's a value add. That's Suddenly, right. the client says, "Oh, wow, we could get that too." How much is that? Oh, no, no, that's just part of it. That's nice. that's a fun thing to be able to to discuss with them. Now, it, are you, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, no, I, I'm just wondering, like, I, I know a lot now with like technology and in, 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 in the automotive world that uh, there are things that are updatable for lack of a better term. You don't necessarily have to swap out hardware every year like you would in the past. Things can receive right. over the air updates and other terms like that. Are, are things more manageable remotely, like from your position? Uh, I'm assuming they were more hands-on in the past if we had issues technically right. or with hardware. Right. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, it was the, uh, usually it would be bringing the truck to the tech or sending the tech to the truck. That was pretty <laughs> much the option. Sure. And, uh, and yeah, very much more manageable now. Um, I try to typically, and, and every job is different. It has unique needs, uh, unique concerns from the client. Um, but by and large, and all things being equal, I do try to make it uh, more easy to manage uh, manage everything remotely, repair things remotely, update remotely. Um, you know, cellular coverage is, I would like to see it better, faster, cheaper, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's far better than it was 10 years ago. Yeah. And yeah. Certainly 20 years ago. Uh, the era so of giant satellite dishes, <laughs> on top of the head, yeah. 30 feet and, in diameter. And so it is nice to um, to be able to have a client on the phone and they're trying to explain what's going on. And within you know 30 seconds, I'm looking at the problem, helping them walk through how they can avoid that in the future and putting it back together. And I think that there's a lot of value um, in that as well. And it gives them a little bit of peace of mind. For someone who doesn't understand any of that, it's always amazing to me. Like I will call our cable company if we have issues with our uh, internet. And I know I'm not talking to somebody in the States. And then they like log into my system and they're looking through my stuff. It scares me a little bit. Not going to yeah, lie. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's a little frightening. Uh, so Ted, with that being said, what types of technologies do you see on the horizon? Um, specifically in regards to like the visitor experience in our trailers. Now we've we're moving on from monitors and LED screens, mm, hopefully sure. to a new era of. Yeah, and, of and it's a tricky one, right? So um, VR, 360 video, these are, these are big things. Uh, sure. and, and clients are trying to find, and we're trying, we are beginning to learn how to interact with these things. Um, you know, at first it sounded like it would be easy. You, you put in a powerful gaming PC and you put in a headset. All of a sudden, now we've got COVID that we're dealing with, and nobody wants to wear anybody else's headset. Sure, mm -hmm. yeah, um, So now we have to give every client who walks in a, their own head. No, we're not giving away headsets. <laughs> um, but I mean, that was that's one thing that we we're looking at. Okay, so if, if it's not a, a headset and gloved experience of you interacting with the virtual world to totally be immersive in this thing, um, then what is it? So is it a bigger screen like an LED wall? Well, you got to be so close. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a limited space in the trailer. We can't put people inside of a 30 foot ring. Sure. Almost, almost we could. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, so I think that we're going to do a lot more with 360 video and interactives oh. that are a little more 
a uh, little more virtual, a little bit more um, driven by the person, but probably a little bit more um, directed by camera rather than headset. Gotcha. And, gotcha. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, I, I, th I think that that's probably where we're going. So I think maybe more minority report. And, I was uh, just going to say, Tom Cruise, you're moving <laughs> things and like, yeah. Oh my yeah, God. I, yeah, I can't maybe wait. more of that. And, and, and less of, uh, what was the gaming movie that movie that was just released? The, 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 ready Player ready One. Player Thank one. you. Yeah. yeah, maybe a little less Ready Player One. So yeah, I don't think there'll be a Ready Player Two as a sequel, <laughs> just uh, given the box office results. And just, uh, <laughs> Ted, currently, are we? Are you seeing any um, challenges with like supply chain in terms of Absolutely, technology? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, this is a real tough time. Um, I, I'd like to say coming out of COVID, um, but uh, or back in or wh wherever we happen to be, yeah, yeah, it it affected a lot of the processes so far back that some things are just beginning, um, and more things are affected later. I mean, there's there are shortages now in everything from lumber to steel yeah um, everything from yeah. every, every bit of technology and and every chip and everything they're, they're just it's so across the board mm -hmm. um and and there's a leap in pricing for all of these things uh everything costs more than it used to uh concrete costs more concrete goes on back order have you ever heard of such a thing <laughs> never um so these are, I mean, these are real issues. So right now, right now it's a little bit of a struggle. I find myself on occasion buying a little more stock of things just to have something on hand because we go through them so regularly mm -hmm. um, and, and turning over a lot more stones, just trying to find that mini form factor computer or that type of TV, that type of touchscreen or whatever it happens to be uh, that's just not as readily available. Um, I mean, Amazon's still my friend in many ways, but it's not there for everything, you know, and sure. my, ven my vendors are throwing their hands in the air out, out of stock, you know, six month wait time. Uh, so, yeah, um, yeah this, this all, is definitely sure. a, a challenging time. There's more than ever available to us. It's just that most of it's not in stock. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Cool. Well, that pretty much uh, wraps us. Yeah, sums up our conversation. Frank, mm -hmm. did you have anything additionally? No, I just uh, wanted to say thank you to all of our viewers and uh, yes. feel free to uh, follow us on our social media channels. And for any information in regards to MRA, go to www.gomra.com. Yes, and a, an absolute special shout out to Ted O'Malley for joining yes. us today, sharing thank your you, technical Frank expertise on all things hey. mobile. Thank you. I appreciate thank you, you asking me to join. That was fun. Oh. Don't want to hear it. The thanks, pleasure is ours. <laughs> All right. Well, awesome. thanks for tuning in, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next time when we discuss outfitting our trailers. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. All right, everyone. Well, thanks All for right. joining. And right. uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. All Take right. care. Take care.